little to the left. Okay, Steven's barely in frame, but... It'll work. <laughs> Blakey. Boom. Alrighty. Welcome to new location of Indie Couch. Hi. It's our location. Yes. Ours. <laughs> Mine. My own. <laughs> Give us a home of our own. So, for our first uh, movie night, which we may make a pseudo-regular thing. We may swap it out for board game night on occasion. Yeah, because on Steven board. has so many board games. <laughs> yeah, which you'll see a lot of them over time. But um, we watched Princess and the Frog because it was literally the only Disney movie I own. But it's, it, it's, oh, it's one of my favorites. Oh, because you're a Louisiana boy at heart. Be be because, because I'm from New Orleans, because it was the last hand-drawn animated movie, it was just so well done. I saw, I was, it is so beautiful, this movie. Like, Okay, it's not the most moving story of the Disney catalog. It's not the funniest, but it is so goddamn beautiful. Yeah. The, the, for a last hurrah, they did really well. Before they switched over to Tangled and... Frozen. Yeah. Wreck-It Ralph was good. The 100%. But Wreck-It yeah. Ralph, they had the option of making the characters very, very inhuman because right. they're video game characters. Right. <sighs> so, uh, she slept for parts of the movie, but she also apparently watched it on ABC a lot. So yeah, she's, she's seen it more yeah. than either she of us. She will be joining the discussion regardless. <laughs> so, it's... It, have you not seen it, Internet? Have you not? Because we're going to spoil it. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I think... Prince Naveen, the suave French since. motherfucker, <laughs> visiting New Orleans because his parents are like, you have no more money, go away. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Tiana? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. suck with names. You guys are going to have to help me out here. Tiana is a poor black woman in New Orleans because that's common in the 20s. Yeah, that's how it's common today. Shit. <laughs> 90 years on, and we haven't really made much progress in that. Okay, depressing. Going on to the talking alligator. <laughs> oh, Lewis. Such a... Do, 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 I really enjoy him. Do, 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 do. I, I, I thought he was a little annoying, but he was also one of those comic relief characters that had the good sense to stay out of the movie for the most part. Yeah, he, I, I really like him. Ray's my favorite. Oh, Ray is better than Ray by a mile. Ray, Ray is amazing. Raymond the Firefly with the thick, <laughs> very, accent. very thick Cajun accent. I mean, authentic. A very authentic, like the that is the Bayou. They must have had to look long and hard for a voice actor who could do the Bayou. I guarantee. Either you that, they or they actually went to the Bayou and got a guy. <laughs> Either that, or they had just happened to have someone on staff. <laughs> Well, I imagine with all the research into Louis in New Orleans they had to do for this, they yeah. probably met some people. And that's the other thing about this movie, is it is so accurate. Like, you know, perfect example. During the movie, I had a bit of a freak-out moment. Cause... He's so into this. I love it. Um, keep going, keep going. No, Don't stop. For, for some background on that, in Disneyland, there's an area of, of it called New Orleans Square. They have two streets intersecting there to, you know, back, you know make it look more like New Orleans. Except the streets they have intersecting run parallel in the city itself. Are you talking about, like, in the actual Disney World? Or Disneyland. Disneyland. I was going to say... You were the one in California? Yes. The one that was made in, like, the 50s? Yes. You know what, but they... No wonder okay, they got it. No, so you, cannot, they... you cannot excuse that. Are, yes, you can. Yes, I can. The internet wasn't a thing. <laughs> yeah, not, not just that, but that... Back then... You know, this movie was not made. They did not make a true Louisiana movie. The only thing they were really using that for was for the Haunted Mansion ride and also for um, Pirates of the Caribbean to try and tie the two of those together in okay, the area. Okay, here's the thing. Wow, you're good. The two streets they had intersecting <laughs> were you. Bourbon and Royal, two of the oldest streets in New Orleans. Okay, to right. be fair, they probably knew and did that on purpose. They were well, like, they, they probably want to be two, They are two of the most them. iconic streets in New Orleans. Bourbon Street, I've heard of. Shit, Bur tell Disney Imagineers. Come Bur on, let's yeah. go. Bur 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 let's Bur go, Imagineers. Bourbon and Royal Imagine. are two of the most iconic streets. But that bugs me. This one, they fixed it. 
they have Orleans and Royal intersect, and those two streets actually do intersect. Okay, but this is like a movie centered in fucking New Orleans. Yeah, that was like a minor section of a theme park. I feel like <laughs> what they were trying to do is they were trying to take, hey, we have a limited amount of space I mean, here. it's like... What, Let's you, make it work. But you, why not use Orleans instead of... Have you heard Royal. of The Crew... That video game where they, like, you can literally drive the entire United States. Except it's all compressed together. I've never it's heard like, of that. So, it, it was a Ubisoft game, and, um, basically, yes, you can drive a miniature version of the entire United States. It can take you a shit long amount of time to get from one side of the map to the other. Mm -hmm. And they, like, squeezed in all the landmarks where they're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the square mileage is way off, so it's like a theme park ride... Of the entire fucking continental United States. <laughs> my, 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 From the bayou to the... Uh, my, 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 my point was, why not use the other street that intersect... Like, instead of using Bourbon and Royal, use Orleans and Bourbon that actually intersect. Probably because they are trying to find... Probably because they were the lazy. That's, that's my thing. I, I really... I will never say that Disney Imagineers are lazy. Okay, yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. they do so much that... I really honestly think they were trying to find but like, two that like they... main, main streets in New Orleans. And then they had to make and them they... intersect for the yeah. theme park. Like the layout of the theme park called for it. Anyway, can we go back to the New damn Orleans movie? Anyway, the movie is extremely accurate. They have uh, children, tap, ta dancing in, children the tap dancing in the street, which you will see on any given day in the French Quarter. They have street musicians in a couple of different parts of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Which, again, you will see at, on any given day in the French Quarter. I guess now's a good time to mention he's from New Orleans. We already, we already yeah, we, we've that. established but the, that you, know, you were still half the, the architecture <laughs> is all accurate. The map of they show of the city from overhead is accurate. Okay, and on that, Keith David as the Shadow Man. Bravo! Yes, incredible. Keith incredible David. Doctor. Keith David, man. Uh, Goliath on Gargoyles. He was in uh, They Live. He was in. Um, he was in a lot of things. Oh, he was in Armageddon. He was like the black, like um, military guy who ha who was forced to try and nuke the asteroid ahead of time. Uh, just going, okay. just going for a cultural reference point that most people have seen because his movie career is not nearly as robust as his voice acting career. His voice acting career is amazing. Well, I mean, same could be said for a lot of people. He was in Mass Effect. Really? Keith David was in Mass Effect. As who? Like that first Colonel guy. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. that's Keith David. Wow. <laughs> Actually, now that you mention it, I, I, I can hear it. Yeah, and he was in Saints Row 4 playing himself. <laughs> <laughs> and Keith David as Keith David. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that, that was really well done. Uh, uh, music is really solid. M music is incredible. I did... It's very true to the feel of the music down there. Not every song is a hit in my book, but the songs that do hit, oh boy, they nail it. Yeah. Almost there. <laughs> I, and, I think that they really, they really did their homework to create a really cohesive movie. You know, this. I mean, we looked it up. This movie came out in two thousand nine, and animated movies take years to work on. So, at yeah. minimum, they were working on this since two thousand seven, probably two thousand six. Yeah. And being conscious of being respectful of the things you're trying to represent, I feel would be a thing Disney would be very into at that time period in their life cycle. Yeah. I mean, they took so much shit for doing the first Black Princess, and I still don't feel like she gets enough representation in like the merchandising. No, because well, the the problem was she didn't sell as well right after the well, movie came out. Yeah, the, well, that's because the movie didn't sell as well. Yeah, uh, this movie did not make the money it needed to make, which is unfortunate because it's an amazing movie. It really is. It, considering the, she's the first black princess, she's the first princess that actually had to work for what she was receiving. Yeah, that was a big theme, and like, that's something that's like really good because you know the traditional princess story is where she get fall your in shit. Love with the prince. <laughs> And I'm gonna, all my, like, life's problems will be solved. Yeah, I, mean, like, I mean, if you go back to, like, Cinderella, the lesson of Cinderella is not wish and you get what you want for. It's be a good person. And get and, lucky no, as hell. Yeah, be a good person and fate will be kind to you. Which is not 
True. No. But it's a feel-good lesson. The lesson was never... I guess in Pinocchio, the lesson was wish and you get what you want. Yeah. But Pinocchio was much more about his boyhood growing up. Anyway. Snow White was a good wish and you get what you want. Oh, Snow White was the epitome of wish and get you what you want. Wishing well. Yeah. It's first song. Tonight. Tonight. The prince comes out of nowhere. They sing a song and they're in love. Yeah. Woo. No. No. That's not how it is in Snow White. I have not seen Snow White. That is how it is in Snow White. He shows up. They sing one song together. Fall in love. He, oh, she sings the unwishing right. song. She, she sings, he shows up, sings one line, and then they're in love, and he's out of the movie until the end. Well, At least Philip actually did something. Philip? Yeah, the prince in uh, uh, Sleeping Yeah, the prince in Sleeping Beauty. Oh. He actually, at least he did something. He gonna make you watch more Disney movies, huh? <laughs> I did like that in the uh, Cinderella remake, the reason they went around trying the shoe on freaking everybody was because the one guy was trying to look like he was trying to find the person the shoe belonged to. Yeah. So he went completely overboard. It's like, this is why they did something so stupid, because someone was trying to cover their ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But um, we keep getting distracted because there's actually not a lot of meat on the bone of the story of this movie. It's a very basic... They go on an adventure to not be frogs anymore movie. Yeah. And all the fun bits are in the details. The gorgeous animation, the good songs, the fun characters. The all, loopholes. The fun characters who all bounce off of each other very well. Like, Tiana and Naveen actually make a really good pair. Yeah, they have a lot of chemistry. He was a guy who needed direction in life, and she was a woman who needed to know how to let go a little. Yeah. <laughs> the one princess... <laughs> really, even more so than Belle. And yeah. Belle was a very independent woman. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, she's... T t Tiana is total workaholic control freak. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's my restaurant. <laughs> I'm making the gumbo. No, Matt, you run the restaurant. I don't care. <laughs> you don't work in the kitchen. I'm making the gumbo. <laughs> I can see that happening. <laughs> You're not doing it right, give me that! <laughs> but yeah, it's very, very well done. Uh, uh, it, like, I, I first saw this when it was in theaters because... I wish I could have seen it when it was in theaters, because this must be great on the big screen. Oh, it was, it was amazing. It was and the, the whole thing was, I knew it was the last hand-drawn animated movie. It was about New Orleans. There was no way I was going to miss this. And I was not disappointed. It was great. Oh, so good. I, I just have to... I. I cannot stress enough how beautiful this movie is. The animation is fluid, the characters are expressive, and oh my god, the water effects. Yes. They worked their asses off to nail the water effects. Which, if you know anything about the process of hand-drawn animation, water is a bitch. Yeah, water Water and fire are the two riskiest things to ever say we're going to animate a lot of this. Which is <laughs> funny because Disney does them so well they hide words in them. In the water. Yeah, in the water and fire. Well, that's just, that's just showing off at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you'll find things hidden in water, fire, and stars all over Disney. Oh, shit, they, they need to rewatch well, this. Well, <laughs> shit, now we need to rewatch all the Disney movies at slow speed. <laughs> uh, we have no time for this. We all have jobs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, actually, our schedules do not sync up at all. We no, they don't. kind of have the same days off. It's a little fuzzy this week, but we do. Steven has the weekends off. Yeah. We work late on the week. It, it does like, not sync they up. They work retail, I work manufacturing. So it's two totally different schedules. So Sunday evening is about the only time we've got because neither of us work so late on Sunday evening. Yeah. And you visited your mom today. Yeah. That's the because best. it's Mother's Day! Yes! At least Everyone party. say thank you to the human being that birthed you. And I guess the other one who raised you if you're not, if you're adopted. <laughs> or if you have two. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Because that is a thing. It is a thing. Oh, and lesbian couples. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about like, like mother and oh, like, like a step stepmother. Sort of we both went for stepmother in our head. Well, I was thinking it could have been like a lesbian Oh, I mean, yeah, there's that too, but... Does that count for my cousin Nate? No, I don't know. 
Because <laughs> he had a dad, and then uh, his mom and his dad didn't, like, stay together, and then right. his mom married my aunt. I don't know. I've never bothered to ask. <laughs> Uh, we keep getting distracted. <laughs> keep going. We're tired. See, and that's, the, that's what kills me. He's like, I finally watch a good movie with you guys. And we keep getting distracted talking about because it. Because what do you say about a good It's so good. Yeah, like, all we can do is gush about it. Naveen and, and, like, the characters are really precisely calibrated. Naveen is a rich asshole. Yeah. But he's so much fun and he, he's not malevolent. He's just been spoiled his whole life. He, fit, he fits very well with some of the upper class in New Orleans. With and then the there's like atmosphere. Tiana's friend, the daughter of uh, John Goodman. Yeah. Charlotte LaBeouf. <laughs> Which? Uh, Charlotte LaBeouf. Yeah. Who is spoiled rotten. It's like, I'm not going to be a pushover for you, daughter, person. anymore. Now who wants a puppy? <laughs> They do. It's just like, like what you, job, though, what was it? Was it was it, was it Kenny or no? It was your mom who one day I was I was at his house. We just like we're spending the day together playing video games. His mom comes home with a fucking puppy. They went out <laughs> to get groceries and they came yeah. home with a puppy. Yeah. <laughs> That's not like hey, let's go check out the puppies. Oh my god, we must buy one. Yeah. <laughs> And then you do. That's not, like, a thing you're supposed to do. Like, you're supposed to say, oh my god, we should buy this. What and then you go that? home and think about it. I don't remember. They go, you've gone through a lot of pets. Yes, we have. That sounds bad. Now, 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 the, 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 oh, that does but, sound bad. But here's the thing. Like, like the, the key to that is a lot of our pets have been fosters because 99% of our pets have been rescues. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the other side of it. But, um, so, uh, Charlotte is so, like, giggly and hyperactive and obsessed with getting a prince to marry because she wants to be a princess. Yeah. She's and the token person of, she's never had to work, so she's had all her time to dream, and so she pretty much just walks around with her head in the clouds all day. Yeah, Basically. but, again, she's not mean. She's just self-absorbed. Yeah. Like, yeah. when she when she bothers to notice that bad things are happening to other people, she feels bad and tries to help. She's not very good at it. But she tries. Yeah. Like, there's this moment that Tiana, she falls in to, like, this, like, beignet table, basically. Now I want to try beignets. Oh, my God. You, you will. Really should. Um, but, like, you know, Charlotte, she sees it. She's kind of, like, off on her own little walk, but she sees that, like, her friend is hurting. And you know what? She helps. Yeah. And that's how you get During Tiana. the entire time she's helping, she's talking about, like, like oh, oh, I'm gonna, oh, our dreams are coming true, and Tiana's all sad because uh, some assholes were like, no, we're not going to sell this uh, abandoned sugar factory to you. You're a black woman. In the 20s. I mean, they didn't say it like that, but, but they, meant. they really c came close. Like, yeah. it, th that's what they were trying to get across. It's not like what they were implying, that's what they were trying to say. I do yeah. think Disney was really, like, towing that line. They were trying they, so here's hard. Here's the line. They are like, right there. They're, they're like, like look, racism was a thing. Can yeah. we ignore that now, please? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we really don't want a, the whole movie to be sidetracked by racism. Yeah. And then at the end, they just have their, cal their alligator friend threaten them. <laughs> I mean, they still pay for the place. It's just that they're like, oh, I guess we will sell it to you since you have the money and... I know, I like sign the contract. Right there. <laughs> and there's an alligator right there. <laughs> One character I thought, I guess she's important, but she was very MacGuffin-y, was the old blind lady who lives in a boat in a tree in the bayou. Mama yeah, Odie. Mama Odie. Mama Odie. Mama Odie. Who was blind for no particular reason other than to have a snake walking stick. Uh, you, she was there for comic relief, but she was also there to kind of just... She was there to be like, complete the story. yeah, she was there to be like, okay, you need advice on magic. Well, uh, let's see. If you kiss this girl while her dad is the king of Mardi Gras, it's technically she's a princess. Well, see, so that'll break the curse. And that's the, the like I mentioned before, the loopholes are amazing because, uh... You need to kiss a princess to break the frog curse because... Actually, they never established why that is. <laughs> but... It just kind of is because... Right. Fables. <laughs> but I love the loophole of her dad being king of the parade because uh, Metairie Cemetery has more kings and queens buried in it than any other cemetery in the world because they're the kings and queens of Mardi Gras. Ooh. Ooh. Oh dear God! You know, the, you know they have no actual power on the world. Well, no kings and don't queens. They, have like, power don't they like don't they like leave a party for the day or something? What do you mean? In Mardi Gras. 
Okay, okay. See, here's how Mardi Gras works. For the, oh two, boy. <laughs> for the two weeks prior to Mardi Gras Day, there are parades. It's not just one day. That would be stupid. And on Mardi Gras Day, you get probably a dozen parades on both sides of the river. Okay. And then every parade also has a ball at some point during the Mardi Gras season. Or well, at least most of them do. Uh, the big ones have uh, ooh, especially ooh. large balls. But anyway, um, that's, I mean, that's basically how it works is you have the parades, the parades have their balls, and it, it's a giant party. For two weeks. I guess what I would say... That's what I understood. I just want to know where the king... Has because been. they are at the front of the parade. They lead the entire thing. Oh. Yeah. Like, okay. like, like, um, and a lot of times, um, various celebrities will be picked to be the king. Like, Drew Brees has been king of, like, four different parades. Um, Elijah Wood's been the king of a parade before. Oh, how did... Yeah. Cool. Okay. So I would I would say that this is definitely a latter period Disney movie, even though it's ba even though it goes back to the roots of being based on a fairy tale. Cause like, okay, you go on and watch things like Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty. Even though they make changes, they stick pretty. Cl the, the story is basically the story of the fairy tale. Right. Yeah, it's not the official grim fairy tale, which is usually dark as hell in comparison to what Disney actually does. Yeah. But the point is that it sticks to the main beats of the story. Whereas when you hit the 90s Disney, what they do is they have a story they clearly wanted to tell, and they tell it, uh, they, they, like, The Lion King is basically Hamlet. Yeah. But clearly they wanted to tell a lion story. So they did. So they started with lion story. <laughs> and this is the same thing. They wanted to tell a Louisiana story. And they just kind of, like, crowbarred in the princess and the frog elements. Mm -hmm. Which... What you mentioned of, you know, the time it takes to work on a movie, you know, it would have made sense for them to start doing this in 2006, 2005, right after the Following storm. Louise, yeah. Right, right after her. So, it, so, I guess that would be the genesis of the idea. It's like, oh, that's so sad. You know what we should do? We should dedicate a movie to them. And Two, then, yeah. three years later, sorry it took so long. <laughs> yeah. Not, not only to them, but to a high point in New Orleans history. Because the 20s was... A, very fun time in New Orleans. Yeah, okay. Um, one last thing before we go. Um, the Disney animators uh, had an Indiegogo campaign where they wanted to make a new 2D animated movie, like ex-Disney animators. And it got funded, and look forward to that, because it's steampunk. Oh, that sounds Ooh. amazing. Yeah, they're going to have, like, blimps and everything. They're going full Zeppelin steampunk. And um, when you see this, I don't know in what order these videos are going to come out because I've got like a funny skip video and I've got two reviews I'm working on, but we don't have internet yet. Yeah. <laughs> We're so, on it. sort of a problem. Sort of a problem. So, what I'm going to do, I've got a couple days off, so I'm probably going to be a Barnes and Noble squatter while trying to upload some videos. <laughs> it's like you suck up all the videos. <laughs> Once you actually get it up there and it starts processing, it, you can, like, turn it off and go. But, yeah, getting... The... Anyway, so, um, thank you for joining us. We hope to do this somewhat regularly because actually going to the movies now is a little out of the budget all the time. Yeah. Although we're still doing Mad Max. Of course. We have to do that. Just, uh, don't when expect... When does that come out? Uh, the 15th. Uh, I, I know, it's close, but that's the thing. We're just going to have to pick and choose. Like, we might end up skipping Ant-Man. Okay. I mean, like, I want to see Ant-Man, but I don't Ant -Man. need to see it in theaters. I can see yeah, it. I'm not skipping it. You're not... Uh, then you can take the camera. But, uh, we're tired. It's... I don't even know what time it is. 1.35. One thi oh, fucking hell, I'm going to sleep. Mm -hmm. It was a long day at Home Depot. I'll tell you. That. you want... Uh, yeah, you damn night owl. <laughs> You want, to know, you want to know what the most annoying customers are? The ones who come over and are like, But you had it at the other Home Depot. Those people. Oh my <laughs> god. No, no, no. The worst ones are the ones that come to Lowe's and say, But they have this at Home Depot. Then go buy it at Home Depot. <laughs> They're our fucking competitors. <laughs> Asshole.
<laughs> it's like they say that thinking that, you know... They, like, thinking that we'll give them a discount that, or yeah. something. Like yeah. someone promised so them Somehow we will magically come up with the product that you saw, <laughs> and you'll be able to buy it. Good night.